Hey guys, it's Two Bricks here, and today I wanted to bring you a slightly different video, uh, just a look at my minifigure collection and my Star Wars minifigure wall, which I have right here, as well as to kind of give you a little bit of an overview of the custom shelf that I built to house my collection, and um, yeah, just talk a little bit about how I did that. So yeah, if you guys are interested in uh, looking at a bunch of Star Wars figures today, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to kind of go over all of them uh, in a fairly quick overview style fashion. And then if there's anything else that you guys want to see up close or hear more detail about, uh, let me know down in the comments and we will take a look uh, in a future video at whichever thing you're interested in. Uh, check it out, I've got the uh, custom Star Wars sign up there. That's how you know that this is a Star Wars room, as if all of this didn't give it away. All right guys, so without further ado, let's dive in and see the collection. Okay, so first thing, uh, before we dive into all the figures, for those who are interested in learning about the shelf and how I designed it and uh, what my thought process was, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about that first of all. So uh, the whole reason that I did this is because initially I had base plates that were just kind of nailed into the wall and then I would um, stick uh, bricks onto the base plates that would then hold the figures up and I felt like that was kind of an unsustainable way of doing things because after a while I would run out of space and have to try to add another base plate and just keep going and I was using so many bricks just to hold all the figures up like each one required a um, modified brick underneath the feet to just to be able to plug it into and I just felt like that wasn't going to be a sustainable way of doing things long term. So I wanted a more permanent structure, and so I decided to make this shelf. Um, and so I went to the hardware store and I just bought a, a bunch of these strips of wood, and I set about designing uh, what the shelf was going to look like. Um, I believe this is just pine. It's uh, nothing fancy. Um, so what I wound up doing is I got two different um, thicknesses, uh, just so that I would have a little bit of an offset like this, because I, I felt like that was just a nicer way of doing it. And uh, I wound up just cutting out these blocks. Each of these blocks is the same uh, height. And then sandwiching in between it, these um, really thin kind of shelving strips that I got, which are only like two inches deep. And so I just wound up going down the whole structure, brick, or sorry, block, and then shelf, and then block and shelf all the way down, and just putting a screw and some wood glue in between each one to hold it, and then have another pillar in the middle which is also made of those same blocks that just goes all the way down. Um, and then that whole thing is kind of bolted into the wall um, because uh, I live in an area with earthquakes. So I wanted to make sure that it was really, really secure. And um, yeah, it's uh, several points throughout the shelf. It's actually bolted right into the wall. So this isn't going anywhere. And then um, just when it was done, just slapped on some white paint that I had spare, uh, filled in some of the gaps with um, just some ordinary wood filler. And you know, it's not the prettiest thing, but it definitely does the job that I needed to do. Uh, and I went with white for the paint just because I wanted something that was kind of neutral and wasn't gonna clash too much with either the wall color or with too many of the figures. I mean, I know some of the figures are white, but you know, for the majority, I think the figures pop against the white shelf. So uh, yeah, and then I just took uh, base plates that I had because um, I had a whole bunch of the really large gray base plates and I used uh, two, by, uh, two by length bricks to measure out the thickness to cut uh, strips of these uh, just using a craft knife and then you can see here where the gap is uh, where each base plate I just cut out strips and I hot glued them down to the shelving and that provides ample space for the figures to stand. Um, and then the way that I calculated the height that I wanted the shelves to be is that I took uh, kind of my tallest figures and then I added like um, three quarters of an inch to the height of that, whatever that wound, <laughs> wound up being. Um, and I'm actually regretting that I didn't make the shelves just a little bit higher or the gap in between just a little bit higher because larger um, figures like these buildable droids um, just, just don't fit. So I'm like, ah, gosh, <laughs> I was so close. But for standard minifigures, uh, it accommodates them all really, really well. And of course, if I'd have had more height in between each shelf, that would mean I could fit less shelves overall. So, you know, it's a give and take. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the shelf design. I think the whole thing stands approximately seven feet tall by about six feet wide. So just to give you guys an idea of that. And I think it sticks out of the wall by, uh, by about three inches. Oh, and then the shelf on top, 
uh, is just a standard shelf that I got from, uh, I forget where now, a hardware store, and I just decided to top off the whole thing so I would have some extra room to display some of my larger characters and buildable figures up there. So there you go. All right, so with that out of the way, let's take a look at the figures. So starting up at the top here, um, I do count all brick-built uh, droids and things like that and brick-built characters uh, as far as being part of my minifigure collection, as well as all of the large molded animals and creatures as well. So starting on this side, we have the Gungan um, mounts. I forget the name. I think they're called Cadoos or something like that. Um, the classic 1999 or maybe year 2000. A uh, vulture droid, a couple variations of the mini spider droid. These tall guys that I was talking about that don't fit down below. I think these are the medical droids that uh, put Vader back together. A couple of dewbacks. I really like these microfighter ones. Uh, I'm really excited to get the uh, yeah the newer ones of those. I think those are really cool buildable ones. Um, and of course you got your uh, Wampa beast and uh, your Tauntaun there from Empire. And Jabba the Hutt. I only have the uh, 2010 Jabba. I really want to get some of the older ones. They're hilarious looking, uh, but this one looks really great. And of course the Rancor. Oh no, the Rancor is missing his claws. I actually used those for another build, so I got to replace those. Um, he looks like he's had a pedicure or a manicure that went too crazy. A couple of versions of the um, Sarlacc Pit. And then the Lugger Beast from Episode 7. And then this weird spindly spider droid thing that was from Return of the Jedi. A couple of variations and also the mini version of the uh, Wrath Towers from Episode 7. And a partially completed Boga, which is the dinosaur that Obi-Wan rides on in Episode 3. And a, a head of a dewback, which uh, I'm hoping to eventually complete. Um, and of course my two brick sign. So that it gives you a view of the guys on the top shelf. So let's move on to the droids. All right, and then so on the first official uh, minifig shelf, I have all of my astromechs, uh, starting with my R2-D2s. Uh, and the way that I've tried to organize it, um, it's a little, uh, there's probably some variations around, but basically older uh, release style, and then also first appearance in the movies is how I kind of categorize it. So stuff that's non-canon, like these Christmas ones, will go at the end. And then um, as you go through, hopefully, if there's like a yellow face figure from the early days, that'll go first, and then in order of appearance in the movies after that. So here's all the rest of my astromechs. And it's a Bucket from Resistance, I really like that guy. And then uh, this old Republic one with the printed dishes, I think is a really cool design. It was a, it was a pricey one to get a hold of, but <laughs> I'm really glad that I have it. Uh, and then the infamous pearl gold uh, C-3PO that was from this older experiment Lego was doing with gold colors that just looks completely bizarre. I'm really glad that they moved away from that. He looks like he's made of jello or something. Um, into the more classic, familiar uh, gold color that we know. And of course some Christmas C-3PO there. And then different uh, protocol droids. And I love this chrome TC-14. I cannot believe that this was a May the 4th promotion. Those are really uh, gotten less special as the years have gone on, but I think this is probably my favorite one they ever did. Uh, and then my BB units and a couple of porgs and a uh, little Dio there. Okay, and then we have all of the human figures coming up next. And uh, just really briefly, the reason that I decided to display the droids on the top first is because um, R2 and C3PO are kind of the only constant presence throughout all of the movies. So I felt like they deserve the top billing. And then since I put all my astromechs, you know, or I put R2 up here, I wanted to put all the other astromechs with it. And then the same goes for 3PO. And then, so next up we have kind of the, what's called the holy trinity of, you know, Luke, uh, Leia, and, uh, well, Han, there's too many Han, so he had to go down on the next shelf, but that's kind of the my thinking. Um, so we have all the Luke Skywalkers here, uh, starting with this um, classic one. I think this is the uh, the actual classic figure right here. And then there's a, 20th anniversary one um, that I have floating around somewhere. Um, but yeah, so here's all my Lukes. Um, kind of going in appearance of like uh, when they appeared in the movie and then the earliest production variant first. So, you know, the yellow face figure first and then um, the later versions of those come afterwards. Um, I actually really liked this helmet idea that they had with the actual visor on there. I think that's super cool and I wish that they'd continued that, but alas.
and then uh, Metal Luke going down into uh, Empire Strikes Back, and then Revenge or uh, Return of the Jedi, and then Old Man Luke. Um, and also, I love that we got this in an advent calendar to give us the the uh, Last Jedi variant of Luke, because otherwise we wouldn't have had him, which is great. Um, and then all the Princess Leia's. Of course, now she has the skirt piece, which I uh, absolutely love. Way better than just having standard legs for Leia. And then all the different uh, outfit changes she has in Return of the Jedi. And then finally into the modern era. Here's all my Chewbacca's. And then I'm uh, including all the non-canon stuff too, like the uh, Christmas variants of all the figures. And then Han. Uh, this is a uh, kid version of Han, which came in a DVD that was part of like a Lego special uh, kind of short film thing where this kid is named Ian Solo, but he turns the the eye around and it's it's Han. And you're like, oh, it's Han. <laughs> uh, and then going through all the. So here's the solo variations, and then the classic trilogy, of course, into Empire. I really like this breather mask version, and the carbonite. Uh, I feel like now that Han has the new hair, we need an updated carbonite piece that reflects that in the hair. And then going through all the different um, uh, Return of the Jedi Han solos, and then to Old Man Solo. These are technically the same figure, but uh, they had two different faces, so whenever I have multiple figures with different facial expressions. I like to display them both. And then all of the Landos, all the way through into his latest appearance in Rise of Skywalker, which is great. Um, I figured these guys are kind of important to Han's backstory, like Lando, Kira, and Beckett all kind of shaped him, so I decided to kind of put those near each other. And then we're starting to get into the Jedi now with Yoda, of course the most OP Jedi of all time. And then we get down into the prequel section with all the little uh, young Anakins. Um, in the beginning, they didn't have the short legs for him, so he was just a regular size figure. Um, and then, you know, obviously now short legs came along later. And then into teenage Anakin, Clone Wars Anakin, super angry Anakin, charred and crispy Anakin, and then into finally Darth Vader. Um, and I'm super proud of uh, this figure right here. This is one of the super rare um, light-up ones that they did. It's kind of hard to see. I don't know if you guys can make that out or not. When it, you push down on his head, the lightsaber lights up. Uh, the reason that these weren't very popular is that you couldn't pose the hands, uh, the arm, um, the arm, the lightsaber, and all that is all connected to allow for you know the the wires and the mechanism to do that. So, you know, you couldn't replace their cape, you couldn't uh, customize any of that stuff. So that is kind of annoying, and that's the reason that those were pretty short-lived. But I think they're a really nice kind of oddity of LEGO Star Wars collecting. Uh, and then all the different uh, skin tones that they had for Vader throughout the years, you couldn't quite settle on one. But I think white seems to be the default now that they've gone with. And then into the different Qui-Gons. For such a short-lived character, he has a lot of nice variation and I don't have any of the original uh, yellow skin production versions of him so that's on my list as is every single other figure <laughs> and then into all the different Obi-Wans Padawan through to Master through to Clone Wars veteran and then finally original trilogy um, and then this is the actual original figure and then this is the 20th anniversary one so um, because that's because that's like the most recent one it's weird because he has the yellow skin but I just yeah, I just put it at the end. And I'm taking a look at all the rays next. Um, from now we're into the kind of sequel era. So you may be realizing the pattern here is like main characters from each trilogy first and then supplemental characters going down. Um, and you're probably thinking, what happens when you get a new figure and your arrangement is all thrown off? Uh, I just rearrange them. <laughs> it's a real pain in the butt. And I always put off doing it for a long time because uh, it is just a huge pain. Like you can see uh, up here I have this classic Luke is just kind of hanging out on one stud because I don't have room for him right now and I really don't want to rearrange all these <laughs> right now. Some people uh, arrange them by just straight up like order of when they came out um, and, they, and you get kind of a randomized look to your figures that way and I really didn't want to do that. I love seeing the progression of characters like if you look at you know Anakin through the years 
Um, I think that's a more like pleasing way to display them. And so I'm willing to put up with the uh, extra effort of having to rearrange them every couple months. But um, yeah, that's a pain in the butt, but uh, it's just what brings me the most joy. And as I've spent so much time and effort, not to mention money, getting a hold of all of these, I want to get the maximum joy out of them that I can. So here's all the different rays. I really like this variant of her, the uh, end of Force Awakens. I'm really glad that we got that. And then The Last Jedi, and of course, Rise of Skywalker. I, I really wish we could get a version two where she's um, <clears throat> where she has the hood up. I think that would be a really cool look. Um, all the different fins. Back to suit fin, which is hilarious. Love that. Um, yeah, and then down into Rise of Skywalker. And then this is the uh, animated appearance of um, Poe from Resistance. And then into the more modern you know, Last Jedi. And then uh, Rise of Skywalker, where he's fully rocking his Indiana Jones look. I love that. All the different roses. Uh, R.I.P. Rose's uh, screen time for Rise of Skywalker. I don't even know if we're going to get a figure of her for Rise of Skywalker, but oh well. Uh, Snoke. And then this uh, is a hologram which came in the uh, Star Destroyer, and I think it's a hologram of Kylo, or it might be a hologram of Snoke. I'm not actually sure, so I just put it in between the two. Um, and I really love this version of Kylo with just the face printing for the helmet and the hood. I think that looks super cool. And then down into all the different versions of him. It's a really subtle uh, change in outfit from Force Awakens to The Last Jedi. So I really like that they just reflected that uh, in the printing. And then Rise of Skywalker with his reforged helmet. And there's Maz, uh, Laura Santeca, DJ, uh, Ankar Plot, and all the kind of random guards. Tito and uh, Zori Bliss. And then the Guavian Death Gang down here. So that pretty much concludes Force Awakens. And next up, the crew of Rogue One. Um, pretty sure these are the only ones of these guys we're ever going to get. So that's kind of the full set right there. Uh, really happy with those figures, particularly K2. I think it came out awesome. Uh, and then the Rebels crew, all of those guys. Uh, again, I think we're pretty much done getting Rebels figures. Um, I'm sure that we'll get uh, continue to get Ahsoka in future as she continues to pop up in more Star Wars things, but um, yeah, I think that represents the full Rebels lineup right there. And then get down into the kind of core uh, Jedi Council type members. You got Mace Windu, Luminara, and uh, going down there, you got Shakti and Isla Sakura. All these background Jedi who all got murdered in Order 66, uh, except for this guy who decided he was gonna try to take on Jango Fett in Attack of the Clones and got shot off the balcony, which is very sad. And this guy, who's Jedi Bob, who never actually appeared in the movies, and is just a generic Jedi. And then we've got some Old Republic guys down here too. And then we're down into the dark side. So we have one of the original or earliest Sith here with Revan, and then the Sith troopers from the Old Republic. And then Palpatine, back before we knew he was evil, except he was very obviously always evil. <laughs> and then down into all the different versions of the Emperor. Darth Maul here. Uh, interestingly, the one version of the dark saber that we've um, gotten is just this black bladed lightsaber blade. Be interesting to see if in future uh, that gets a retreatment because you guys might know that recently resurfaced in Star Wars canon. Uh, all the different uh, apprentices, Dooku and Sarge Ventress, and then the Inquisitors. Um, these guys. This is. Nari and uh, I forget this guy's name, but it's a robot bounty hunter from um, the Freemaker Adventures, which is just a straight up Lego non canon thing, but uh, they kind of look like you know they could fill out the ranks of the Inquisitors. Uh, here's classic weird looking Grievous, which I just I love. It's so it's so bizarre looking and it looks nothing like General Grievous, and that's probably the reason I love it. I mean, these are just fantastic. I mean, these look like tabletop miniature figures. The, standard is so high but there's just something about these old <laughs> figures that crack me up uh, and then down into death watch and all of these separatist uh, leadership and then these are just some kind of unaffiliated uh sort of antagonists you know you got the umbar and soldier and then um, this is star killer i didn't really know where to put him amongst the lineup um you know from uh what do you call it? From the Force Unleashed. <laughs> and then 
Um, some of the Old Republic uh, continued kind of Sith here. And then the Knights of Ren, uh, I'm still figuring out where I want to place them in the lineup, uh, but those are the only two I have so far. Now we're into the kind of scum and villainy. So you have the Fets, Django and Boba. And then going down the line, I love this one. I still need to get the other white variation, which is um, this kind of classic look. There's a white version of that, which I really want to get my hands on. Bosk and Dengar and Forlom and IG-88. And uh, I forget this guy, oh, Zuckus. I think that's his name, or I forget, but yeah, uh, all the bounty hunters from Empire, Greedo, and all the Clone Wars bounty hunters, and Sam Wessel, the shapeshifter, who was a pretty sad thing to introduce such a cool concept as a shapeshifter in Star Wars and then not really do anything with it, but at least we got a cool figure out of it. She has this really wild looking uh, facial expression, which is just really cool, um, but yeah, I like to leave that as a little surprise and just have her normal face out and then uh all the guy the cloud riders and the kind of various bad guys or unaffiliated from solo the mandalorian crew here uh some more different uh different criminal syndicate uh, aligned folks from solo here's all the kessel guys and then down here into the uh various weak way pirates and finally, just row to the hut, Jabba's little stinky son. I don't know why, uh, where he should really belong, so I just put him in with the bad guys. And next up, we have a bunch of Jawas, uh, all the different versions of Tusken Raiders that we've had so far. I believe I have every single one. Um, and then uh, I really like this skin color for uh, for this guy. Uh, forget his name. You know, Jabba's major domo. Um, but the flesh is. It's really creepy looking. <laughs> and then down into all the different kind of denizens of Jabba's palace slash sail barge. Um, his little friend here who does a little annoying laugh that everybody knows, the, the monkey lizard. And then just kind of regular Tatooine denizens. You got the, uh, this guy runs the bar or the cantina and then, you know, the cantina band. This is a skeleton from the <laughs> Sarlacc pit. I counted it as a Star Wars figure because I imagine that he was once someone. Um, and then I only have the one, um, what's this guy's name, Watto. Uh, there's a couple of really fun variations of him throughout the years, but this one is the one that looks, I mean, just incredible with all the different detail and printing and different color plastic. Um, but I like some of the old kooky ones as well as like, you know, like these kind of one color things, Lego used to have a lot of these. Um, almost statuesque figures, which have definitely not aged well, but they have a certain charm to them that I really like. I mean, if you look at the difference between Sebulba here in his original One Piece form and then this one, I mean, there's just no contest. But still, those hold a special place in my heart. Uh, this guy's missing an arm. I'm still trying to source that, uh, but I thought I'd keep the two pit droids together. And then you got your Uncle Owens and Skyhopper pilots. And then Padme uh, has a place down here, and as does Jar Jar. Um, I'm not really sure where I want to put those guys either, but I had this kind of, this area of the shelf that was free and would accommodate them, so I put them there for now. But I'm probably gonna figure out a way to integrate them later on back uh, closer to the top with the other kind of prequel main guys. But that's where they reside for now. Finally, we got Rebel Pilots. An absolute ton of different variations throughout the years different helmet insignia for each one. Really, really nice. And then A-wing pilots, B-wing pilots, U-wing uh, pilots. You got Captain Smiley here from Rogue One. I really like that guy. He just looked like he was having a blast the whole time. Even when he was crashing to his death, he still looked like he was having a great time. Uh, and then 10, 10 num or 9 num, I forget which one this is. Uh, the Naboo kind of pilots and security forces. You know, I kind of put those with the Rebel Alliance, they're, lo they're like Rebel adjacent, you know, uh, the Gungan soldiers. Anybody who's helped out the good guys, the Ewoks here. And see what I'm talking about with the, these original like one color things. Um, there's something very just Lego to me about having this bizarrely colored, <laughs> you know, single piece thing. Um, even though I love the new more detailed figures, obviously they look amazing. But yeah, there's just, I don't know, it's weird. Um, but yeah, all the different Ewok tribe here, 
and then all the kind of unaffiliated Wookiee soldiers as well. All right, so now we're getting into kind of uh, Rogue One era ground forces for the Re uh, Rebel Alliance. Um, <laughs> this guy's name is Moroff, and I think when they first had the trailers and stuff for Rogue One, this guy kept showing up in it, and I was like, oh, he's going to be like a he's going to be like a new Chewbacca. He's going to be a really interesting character, and he wound up being in like two shots. But uh, his name is very appropriate because I wish we got more of him. <laughs> and then the regular uh, different soldiers throughout the Rebel Alliance history. And then some more specialized kind of Battlefront uh, era Rebel troops. And then, uh, of course, into Empire. There's a Rebel Alliance snowman. And then all the different uh, specialized forces for Endor. And um, I really like that we got this figure of um, Bail Organa. It's really cool. And then this is uh, Admiral Radis. He, uh, he wound up losing his life at the Battle of Scarif, but they named a ship after him, so that's cool. And then uh, Akbar. And some of the characters from Rebels. Fun bit of trivia. This guy is also uh, like Akbar. He's also a Mon, uh, Mon Calamari, but he's a little tiny one. And he invented the B-Wing. So there you go. Um, this guy's missing his hair. He has the same hair as old man Han Solo, so I got to track down one of those. Um, and then just some kind of rebel ground crew and folks like that. Um, this guy was, um, I believe his name is Onaconda Far. He was in the Clone Wars, and he's kind of an uh, ally of Padme's. Again, I didn't really know where to put him, so he's kind of, he's a politician. He's like uh, friendly to the good guys, so I just kind of put him in here with the rest. <laughs> and then the Freemaker Adventures crew. Once again, I think we're done getting figures for those, so that would be the complete crew right there. And then uh, kind of unaffiliated, uh, again, kind of rebel adjacent uh, figures. So these are all from Cloud City. And then, you know, these guys just follow orders, but they do wind up helping Leia to escape, uh, Leia and Chewie with Lando. So um, these are the Skyhopper, or sorry, I mean, um, Cloud Car pilots. And then we're down into the Resistance era. So starting with Holdo, and I forget this commander's name, but you see him in the Battle of Crate. And then all the Resistance pilots, which have just absolutely fantastic detailing. I mean, all of the prints and their torsos and things are just incredible. Uh, I was not one of the lucky people to get a Finch Dallow, which is the other Resistance bomber pilot. Uh, so I have to go track that down and spend a bunch of money to get a hold of him. It was a weird, um, you guys can Google it, Google Finch Dallow Lego, and you'll see there's a weird thing where Lego kind of switched out the figure midway through the production. So some people got one and some people got the other. Uh, and then just more unaffiliated, uh, unnamed kind of ground forces for the resistance. And then the one hero that we got so far from uh, the resistance TV show, Kaz. And then a little Bulio here from episode nine. And then these guys need to find a place down below, but I just have them here for now, which is they're the clone um, kind of Senate guards. And, uh, uh, you know, there's not really a good spot for them, so they're just hanging out in this little empty area for now. All right, and then the Empire. So Empire leadership. The one alien who was so badass that he made his way into the Empire. Super cool. Um, there's Callus, And we got uh, Admiral Yolar in there. I was really glad to get this. This was a made a fourth figure, and uh, we were desperately needing more kind of empire leadership, so I was glad to get that. And here's all the different officers and pilots, uh, you know, shuttle pilots. Um, this is a figure from the uh, Force Unleashed. Um, I forget her name right now, but she has such a bizarre looking hair setup where it's like the two strands of hair go down the side of her face, and it almost looks like, it's almost like, uh, Line, like outlines from a sticker or something. It doesn't look like hair at all. It's very, very weird. Oh, Juno Eclipse, that was her name. Um, yeah, but you know, I gotta get them all, so that figure needs to be in there. Uh, and then here's all the uh, Emperor's Guards, and then like a black variation of that. And then down into all the AT-AT -AT drivers, or various AT drivers, uh, TIE pilots, and then kind of Imperial ground crew. Some of these are from Rogue One, some of these are from the Death Star. And then the Empire continued with uh, the Death Troopers from Rogue One and now the Mandalorian. 
regular stormtroopers. I really like this balaclava design. I feel like I was really sad that they went back on using those because I thought that was a perfect solution for stormtroopers. Um, so many different variations of the classic stormtrooper throughout the years. There's all the ones from Tatooine. And then shadow troopers. Uh, shore troopers from Rogue One. And then down into Empire, we've got the snow troopers. And then Return of the Jedi, we've got the scouts. Shock troopers and other weird variations. Uh, these are the ones that were like security on the train that uh, Han Solo robbed. And then Inferno Squadron. Oh yeah, and then uh, I don't, I just <laughs> need space for this guy, but uh, he's not like an ex, uh, an ex-imperial. Um, uh, what was this guy's name? Anyway, he's from Resistance. So I thought I'd put him in there with the uh, Imperials. And then First Order leadership with Hux and various uh, Imperial officer or uh, First Order officers. Snoke's Royal Guards. I like just how many crazy weapons these guys all have. Um, they're all super different, so that's cool. And a little training droid that came with the battle pack. And then down into pilots. This guy here is Major Von Reg from uh, Resistance. He's a really cool, really cool looking figure. Um, and then Phasma. And then all this, the different variations of the standard ground troopers um, for the First Order. Uh, and then the dedicated executioner officer, which I'm curious if that's something that um, not all First Order officers can uh, or First Order troops can perform that task. They need a dedicated executioner, which I think is a hilarious concept when these are just mindless uh, killing machines that have been programmed from birth. Uh, flame troopers, uh, and then into, again, just sort of ground crew and um, navigational and all those kind of things. And then just some couple of additional trooper variants from the uh, Rise of Skywalker, where I haven't had time to figure out where they're going to go yet, so they go at the end. And these are some of the Old Republic kind of clone trooper forerunners. They look very similar to clone troopers, so I put them in there. This is a non-canon Yoda Chronicles clone. And then the standard phase one clones. And then so many different variations of those from throughout the show. You know, a bunch of these have their own names and their own backstories and all kinds of stuff. Um, clone Wars is really fun for that. And then uh, since I have Rex here, I decided to put older Rex and Wolf and Gregor in there as well. Um, and then kind of getting into phase two clones here. Again, just an absolute ton of variation. Clone scouts, clone pilots, clone specialists, and then all the different battle droids from throughout the years. I kind of miss these old stubby blasters that were just like a megaphone with an orange dot on the front. Um, I like those. But yeah, these uh, battle droids are super spindly and it's they always fall down over time, so I have to stand them back up. Uh, there's all the different variations. The color markings are like for whatever specialist job they're given, you know. Uh, and then phase two, battle droids, and then all the different weird variations from throughout the Clone Wars. And uh, uh, this one's from Revenge of the Sith. Uh, these ones are Clone Wars. And then old medical droids down here. And then tactical and protocol droids of various sorts. Uh, gonk droids, I really like this one that just came in the most recent advent calendar. It's a Christmas present version of a gonk droid. That's cool. Uh, all the little mouse droids down here from the Death Star and such. And then just various different little probes and things of that sort. Uh, this is actually a Thai pilot robot brain. It's like an integrated um, it's, it's very weird. It's like an integrated uh, head of an astromech that just pilots or helps pilot TIE fighters, apparently. This is a little door security droid that, again, made a reappearance in The Mandalorian, so that was cool. And then finally, just a couple of other brick-built droids down here. Buzz droids and probe droids and droidicas. And then one final brick-built creature, which is the Minoc, which is from the Ultimate Collector series Millennium Falcon, which I did not get. And I was really happy that they put this into a um, uh, advent calendar so I didn't have to spend $800 to get a Minoc. And then finally just these little guys which aren't technically minifigures but I really like to have them alongside which is um, these are from a board game series Lego did a kind of short-lived 
experiment with Lego built board games. And so they did a Star Wars one, so I knew I had to get it. All right, so there you guys have it, the full collection. And uh, like I said, if there are any kind of ones that you wanna take a closer look at or look at different variations throughout the years or ones that you're interested to see the full collection of, let me know down in the comments and I will cover those in a future video. Uh, but as of right now, I think I'm just gonna wait and every so often when I get a bunch of new figs in, I'll do like a, a wall update. And the goal is to eventually get every single variation of every Star Wars figure ever made. So that'll be cool. I'll give kind of periodic uh, updates on how that's going. Maybe I'll do uh, videos when I get uh, new figs in individually and let you guys know what I've collected and what's going on the wall. But uh, yeah, for now, um, that's about all there is to see. So thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I'm gonna get to work on the next video. Um, this is just kind of a fun little peek behind the curtain at uh, some of my own personal collecting. So hope you guys enjoyed seeing all of that. And uh, yeah, thanks again for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks you guys, may the force be with you.